I want to make a prediction. 100% of you here are going to fail. No doubt about it. And what I want to do is talk about what do you do with it once you do fail, because you will. Let me start with this little guy over here. He's my one-year-old son. I love watching him. And uh, one time I was watching him, I started watching him take that first step towards learning how to walk. And the first time he took a first step, this is what happened to him. He fell flat on his face. It was very painful. Very much so for him, obviously, but even more so for me when my wife found out that I let him fall. I could hear Fatty, you know, somewhere in the background saying, Dad, ah. I didn't do it on purpose. But something very interesting happened the second time. The second time that he took that first step, he fell on his bum. Right? He learned, in my opinion, that it's far less painful to fall flat on your bum than to fall on your face. So who here think that he failed in walking because he fell down? Right? Who here think that he learned something by falling on his face? That's exactly the point. He learned through his failure, and that's what I would like to talk about a little more. Failure is a very dear concept to me. I failed a lot in my life, and quite frankly, I'm proud of those failure moments because I learned from every single one of them. I started three companies. Two of them were massive failures. I've coached and I've helped a lot of people in the entrepreneurship circle to build their own companies, and, and most of them have failed. Some of them have succeeded. And I think the success came became because they failed. Um, let's look at the classical definition of failure. The classical definition, based on an online search, is a person or thing that is unsuccessful or disappointing. I mean, think about that for a moment. I mean, just reading that definition makes me not want to fail. And usually not wanting to fail means not trying. Let's do a little thought experiment. Compare in your mind these two statements, very similar. He is a failure versus he had a failure, he or she, right? And, and that's, that's what I want to do today is I want to help you break down the concept of failure, remove the shame away from it, because there should be no shame in trying and failing at all, as long as you learn. And this, this definition just strikes fear in my heart when I see it. And it should be struck from the dictionaries completely. Because this is only going to teach you not to try. Let me share a little story with you that taught me how to learn from my failures. Um, when I was doing my master's back in 2007, I wanted so bad, like I could feel it, right, to be a consultant, strategy consultant. I thought I had this great gift that I wanted to bring to the world and I wanted to make it happen. I had the grades, I worked hard, I had the work experience, I made the network, I thought I had it all. So I applied to these 30 firms, I was doing it, this was my master's in Canada after my engineering degree here. And uh, I got 30 interviews, which was a big deal back then. And I'm like, yeah, I got 30 interviews, right? I mean, who hasn't felt that, uh, that feeling of inci invincibility? And I go into these interviews so arrogant, right? Like, I'm the man, I can do this, and statistically I'm going to land and convert two of these. Yet within the first couple of days, I got my first rejection call. And before I knew it, every single firm had rejected me. I was devastated by that feedback. And uh, I remember people asking me, well, Jed, how did you do? You know, because you're showing off, you had 30 interviews. Oh, yeah, these strategy firms, they don't take Arabs, right? And uh, I wasn't well prepared. I thought of every excuse of why they rejected me, but I didn't even think to reflect on why maybe it was something for me. And I had a great mentor who told me, Jad, why don't you call these firms and find out? So I did. And without exception, all these firms told me, Jad, you know, your attitude was just, we couldn't deal with you. And, uh, and that taught me that, that, you know, I needed to change myself. I needed to adapt to the circumstances I was in. I needed to change myself. And uh, irony of ironies turned out I wasn't a good consultant. I did it for two years, and I hated every single moment of it. And uh, yet I reinvented myself again as, as an entrepreneur. And uh, I've been very happy since. During that transformative moment, I had a, I had a, a mentor who, uh, like, how do I deal with all this, right? And, and all the emotions and stuff like that, and the negative attitudes and all of it. And he told me, Jad, you have to become water. I was like, what do you mean, water? Like, I'm a fire, right? I want to burn the world with my energy. And, ah, ah. 
you know, at worst, I'm a flood and I want to move everything out of my way. And he said, Jad, you know, just observe water. And since I wasn't doing so well, I took up his advice and I decided to actually sit down, calm myself and look at water. This is water. Can anybody disagree with that? It's water in a glass. This is that same water in a different container. This is me filling that container with water. There's a pattern here. I mean, let's see if we can figure this out. This is the same water boiling. This is the same water as ice, it changed state. And I didn't want to waste the hot water and the cold water, so I made them make some nice iced tea. <laughs> the point is, water flows. It adapts to the container it is in. And that container are the conditions that we face in life. These conditions can be anything. They can be your boss, they can be your friends, they can be your own personal beliefs, they can be the country you live in. It doesn't matter. The point is, that I took from this, is you need to learn to adapt and flow like water. So that brings me to the point, what does adapt mean? And for me, adaptation is being able to flow through different mental states. And the framework that has helped me to reach my success, and, and I've, I've, been, I've been helping other people to do that as well, is thinking of the framework through four categories so that you can reach this state of being in equilibrium. The first category, the first mental stance, is the optimist, you know, the, the, the favorite of the crowds. You know, everybody is saying, be positive, you know, you can do it. And it's very important. If you do not believe in what you can do and what you can accomplish, why should other people believe in you? If you're starting a company and you want to raise money and you're trying to convince investors of what you can do, if you cannot come across as, I know I can do this, why should they care about what you, th what, if, if you don't care, why should they? Why should other people join you on your journey if you don't have the belief in it? This is the optimistic stance. I can do it. I know I can. At the same time, though, there's another very important stance that people don't talk about often. The pessimism. The belief that I can't do something. In life, we have a short amount of time. You know, other speakers have talked about greatly. You can only do so many things. The power of saying, no, I cannot do that, or I should not do that for X reasons, is not well thought out, in my opinion. A lot of people enter new ventures or do some personal project or professional project, but have, have you thought if you can actually pull this off or not? Have you taken the step back and say, wait a minute, maybe I should not be doing this now? Pessimist, the belief that you, or the, the feeling that you should not be doing something. And then there's the pragmatic stance, the stance that says, listen, wait a minute, I don't care what I think, I don't care what you think. I want to see what the data says. I want to do a cost-benefit analysis, whatever. I want to go talk to people, right? I mean, uh, there's, there's a cool example in The Purple Cow. Like, I want to sell licorice ice cream. Well, that's great. You believe you should sell it, but will, actually people, will people actually buy it? Do they care enough enough about it? So the pragmatic stance is about dispelling the illusions that you have in your mind by seeking data, seeking feedback, talking to other people. And then finally, we have the skeptic stance. The skeptic is all about asking questions. Wait a minute, why should I even be doing this venture? Why should I even be entering in this relationship? Why should I even be standing here and talking? The, pe the skeptic is all about asking questions. And as obvious as it sounds, I've seen so many people forget, you do not find an answer if you do not ask a question. Now, the key is about flowing from one mental state to the other, like water for any endeavor you do, finding the equilibrium between these four states. And it's very important, in my opinion, not to skew too much to one state. Why? Because the optimist, if you're always optimist, you will never listen to people, you'll never listen to reason, you'll never listen to feedback. If you're always pessimistic, you will never try. If you're always a skeptic, you know, you'll, you'll be asking questions and never answering them. And if you're always pragmatic, you might bend too far and you might snap. So it's important to find the equilibrium between all four. Gibran, one of my favorite poets, in, uh, well, he's Lebanese too, right? That always helps. He once said, he has a beautiful saying, and he said, the optimist will see the rose and not the thorns. The pessimist will only see the thorns and be oblivious to the rose. But the skeptic is me saying, wait a minute. 
why can't I appreciate the beauty of the rose and at the same time be aware of the thorns so that if I do decide to pick it up, I don't hurt myself. The human mind is not binary. It is not one and zero. It is not I'm always pragmatic or I'm always pessimistic or I'm always this. I believe with a lot of practice, anybody can master flowing between these four stances. It all begins with being aware of which stance you're in, being aware of which stance you need to move to, and then building that awareness into a level where you can flow between all of them. So this brings me back to failure. In my opinion, failure is nothing but a means of teaching you how to flow in these stances. Failure is, is, is just an adaptation mechanism, and once you become aware of it, it becomes easy to learn from your failures. And I think Charles Darwin said it best by saying, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one most adaptable to change. So what do I think? I think it's time to redefine in your minds the meaning of the word failure. In my book, failure is the inability to adapt. If circumstances change on you, if conditions change, yet you do the same thing, do not expect to find success. You need to learn how to change with your different circumstances. And finally, you will fail a lot. More importantly, you should fail, because in my opinion, if you do not fail, you will not grow. So, you know what? Failure, best teacher. Thank you.